Hey, what's going on, beautiful Jolly? This is Tracy, and before we get into this video, I just want to say I normally post two videos a week. I'm only posting one video this week. I have been so swamped with work. Our assistant manager is out right now, and I'm basically doing two jobs. And I worked two 12-hour days yesterday, and I'm I've got so much going on this week. It's just been like a really nuts week. So it's only one video this week, but next week we should return to our originally scheduled programming. Um, assuming everything goes to plan. Um, but I wanted to do this video that um, I thought of when I was like thinking of like video ideas that I was like, I really want to do a video talking about like mistakes that I feel like people make when they're drafting. And I'm totally guilty of making these mistakes as well. And I've done this in the past, but I've definitely learned a lot through drafting and I wanted to do a video on it. And then I wanted to offer alternatives and solutions. Um, I've really found though with draft is it's kind of one of those things like I'm a kinesthetic learner, which means I need to like do something in order to like learn from it. Like you can't lecture me. I'm not going to learn from that. So I think a lot of these things is like people taking these tips and then like applying them to like situations. I think you just have to draft a lot just to get much better at it. So the first tip that I have on this subject matter um, and kind of one issue I would say that a lot of people do is they don't run enough creatures. And I have totally been guilty of doing this when I draft because I get super into, here's my thing, when I draft I get so into removal. I'm like all the removal I need at all. Um, my Goal number, I would say, though, just something to keep in mind about roughly the amount of creatures you want. Now, you can have a little bit more. I would not recommend going less than 17. Um, so I am very, very conscious of this when I draft. It's definitely a mistake that I know that I do is I don't draft enough creatures. So I would just stick that sweet spot of 17. I think it makes it really easy like to, rec to remember that sort of number and to be like looking and like when you're picking on cards, like, okay, making sure you're taking enough um, creatures super important um I would just stick to the number 17. I have seen people gone over and I've seen people do like 16 but I honestly would not recommend going any less than that um you definitely want to make sure you're loading your deck full of creatures because that's how you're gonna win um the other flaw I would say or the mistake that people make is they expect too much synergy when you are draft drafting to happen and what I mean by this is let's take a card called sages dowsing um, okay, so you look at this card and you're like, it's counter target spell unless it's controller pays three. If you control a wizard, you draw a card. Now looking at the whole entire card as a whole, you're gonna look at this and say, oh my god, if I, if I have a wizard, like, I get to draw a card and then I also get to counter the spell for three mana. This is a super sweet card. But be under the assumption that when you're drafting that you only have like 10 wizards in your deck and this requires you having a wizard. Unless you you have like every single creature of yours is like a wizard or something, I really wouldn't count on a card like this working. Do not ever expect synergy to happen. Even if you think your synergy is, is decent, I would honestly just always assume like if you have two cards that you're like, these cards are going to go so well together. Guys, they're two out of 40 cards. Like the likelihood of you drawing both of them like is pretty slim to none. So I... I'm under the assumption that I'm never going to have synergy and I'm just going to go under the assumption that these cards are never going to interact with each other. Um, really good mindset I would say to definitely keep in mind when you are drafting. Okay, this is something that I feel as though is, um, is an issue and that is committing too late when you are drafting. Um, I actually have the reverse problem where I commit too early, but I didn't really want to get into that in this video. Um, because I, I definitely have seen people commit too early and it has totally worked out. Um, but anyways, committing too late is basically when you're like, I have no idea what I'm playing and you're pulling cards from like all the colors and you're like, I have no idea what kind of deck I'm building. I would say roughly at like the end of the first pack, you have 15 cards at that point. Um, and like half of the second pack, I would say you want to know like the direction that you're going. I'm not saying you're going to like be like, okay, this card that like, you know, you're going to know some basis, but like definitely make sure you're committing. Like if you're going on like the third pack and you have no idea what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, no bueno. You got to make sure you know what you're doing. Um, roughly towards the end of the first pack, beginning of the second pack. Very, very important, um, something to do. Know the direction that you're going. Okay. Next thing is not picking enough mana fixing. I'm super guilty of this guys. And, um, all I can say to this to be a solution is just pick up your mana fixing. Even if you're doing two colors, it is so important. Even if it's just a land like Evolving Wilds, totally pick this stuff up. It is super important. Huge priority, I would say, in your pool. Um, really, I don't care. If, even if you're doing two colors, like you're going to want mana fixing. Very important. Definitely make sure you, you pick that up. Okay, 
um, huge, huge issue I notice with so many new players in drafting. It's totally a huge mistake, but something that can easily be corrected. Um, is assuming that removal is too much mana. Let's take the card Lash of the Whip as an example. This card's terrible. In, in any really situation, you're never ever gonna see this card run in like anything. It's an awful card. Sweet art, by the way. This art is really gl uh, glorious, gorgeous. I mix those two words together in my head. Um, this is a terrible card. There are no questions about this. However, it's removal. And in your situation, you only have a couple of removal cards. And say you're doing two colors. Now you're limited by like two colors of removal. Your, your removal is just not going to be good a very good portion of the time. However, you need cards like this. You need removal. It is so important. After your creatures and your lands, you're left with a couple of card slots. And you want to fill those well. And you usually want to fill those with removal cards. That's definitely what I would recommend. Um, I, I know this card's terrible and you probably will never want to run a card like this, but you have to. You have to bite the bullet and you have to run removal. Super important. Okay, um, this is a thing that I see so frequently with people. It's that they don't do sideboard or they don't edit their decks in between rounds. If there's like something not working, what's super cool about it is you have this stack of other cards that you can change up. Like there are some cards that you take that you like draft and you're like, oh man, like, like, let's just say artifact removal or enchantment removal or something. You're like, wow, okay, like, I'm, I have this dud card, like, I'm not going to use it. But then it's like, no, like, you have someone who's running, like, a ton of artifacts or enchantments, and you're like, sweet, okay, I'm going to sideboard that card in. Definitely make sure you're taking advantage of your cards or editing cards. I do this all the time when I draft. I am always editing my decks. I'm always tweaking little things or what, whatnot. If your deck's running, your deck's running well, but honestly, definitely make sure you're tweaking your deck and at the very least, seeing if there's cards that you can sideboard in. Very important. Okay, um, this is a huge, huge thing. Is I feel like you get all these people who are like, I want to build a deck that kills someone on turn three. Okay, listen, love your enthusiasm. However, it is so much better to go mid-range strategy. Now, it's not to say that decks that kill you on turn five in, um, in draft are fantastic because I have totally built decks before where I've just punched my opponent with like a four mana four four and just kill them. So people who are trying to kill you early on are looking for like cheap cards that do some stuff. A lot of times they're they're not good. That's not to say that all mana one ones or in that you know two mana creatures. That's not to say they're all bad. They're totally not. But a card like Wily Bander. This card's awful. Don't ever play with a card like this. It's it's garbage. It's a one mana one one. And it gains indestructible for three. Like, this card is just garbage, really. Don't play with cards like this. Because think about the one mana one ones in the grand scheme of if you draw it on turn 17, is it good? If you draw this card on turn 17, is it good? P.S. No, it's not. It's not good. So avoid cards like this. Okay, this is this is the big debacle, I would say, of, of people when they draft. When you draft value over good cards, so let's take a card like Force of Will. Um, this is an expensive ma magic card, especially if you open this in draft and it's like foil. However, in draft, is this card really good? Not really. Mm, counter spells in draft tend to be pretty bad. I would, I like never run counter spells in draft. Would not recommend that. So, um, but however, this is a card that magic card that costs money. And this is a card that like people are going to want to pick up. And some people have this notion if the card's like $50 or whatever, I don't care what else in the pack, I'm taking this. Then let's take a card like, let's just say in, in an alternate universe, Force of Will is in the same set as Wooly Thokdar. Okay, guys, oh boy, can we just talk about this card? This card is like my dream. It's got a big butt and it only costs three mana. Card sweet. Say these are in, say Force of Will and this card is in the same pack. Some people are like, you take Force of Will because it's like X amount of dollars. But like, the better pick is Wooly Thokdar. Especially if you're in like in early stages and you're like, I've got some, some cards in all these colors. Like, this card's freaking sweet. This card's a bomb. Yeah, it's a vanilla card, but it's three mana for a five four. Come on, what's not to love about a card like this? You smack your opponent with this a couple of times, they're dead. Like, come on. The card's great. So, um, yeah, I would definitely say pick... And it's not to say in all situations. Sometimes there are expensive cards that are good in limited and also good in other formats that are met like expense-wise really good. But for the most part, I mean, that's not to say like, listen, if I was in a situation where I was like between these, I don't know what I would do. It'd have to be there. But um, you know what? It really depends. Is do you want to walk away with 
money or trade value or putting an ED in a deck or do you want to walk away with a better draft deck? It's, it's up to you. Okay. Um, the next thing is, this can be, uh, I think, taken in, in two different ways. Um, listening to, like, veteran players, and I'm not saying that all veteran players know what they're talking about. Um, really, what I would, what I would really take away from this, though, is people who do well, like, if you, if you go in, like, a draft environment and you know the people there, and you see them every week and you're like, okay, this person always goes 3-0 or 4-0, um, yeah, turns out they're probably pretty good at magic, and you should probably pay attention to what they're doing. Again, it's not to say they're the best magic player ever, but... If they're consistently doing well, yeah, uh, I'd, I'd give them some credit and I'd follow along with what they're doing. So, um, definitely pay attention to see what your opponents are playing. Listen to them. Um, there are some things that you may disagree with, but try them out. You know, if you don't like your deck, you can change it. Anything like that. So, and you know, if the cards that, you know, you, they think are good, you don't think are good, like, that's up for you to decide. If the veteran player is saying these cards are really fantastic, you just agree, is what it is, but... Chances are, if they're doing pretty well, they probably know what they're talking about um, in terms of which cards are good and which cards are not. <clears throat> okay, um, this this next point I am so partial to because if you know anything about me drafting, you know I love flyers. Blue it flyers, oh god, I could draft that deck all day every day. It's a deck I feel very comfortable with. Take flyers, I'll take the card Razor Foot Griffin. This card's a bomb. Solid, solid common. Um, green. You look at it and you're like, it's a 4 mana 2-2 flying first strike. Cards like this tend to be super simple. They are incredible. Always, always prioritize flyers. Um, that little bit of evasion, especially in a draft setting where, you know, out of the 200 cards, you're only going to have like 10 of them that fly or something like that. Always prioritize them. Your opponent has a really hard time dealing with them most of the time. Um, and again, you just keep smacking your opponent with this they're going to die eventually if they do not have a flying, if they don't have a removal or they don't have flying. Simple as that. Cards like this are incredible. It's also like a first strike too. It's freaking sweet. Um, I'm a sucker for cards like this. I will run them all day every day. Um, you can pry these cards from my cold, lifeless, dead hands. I love them. Okay, um, this is a point that I'm extraordinarily partial to. Cards like this, Angelic Gift. I hate cards like this. If I could just take them Take them away from every player who wants to play with them and burn them in a pile, I will. Card is, this card's awful. It's two mana enchant creature, when it, when this enchantment ATBs you draw a card, but then enchanted creature is fun. Guys, I, the card I just talked about, Razorfoot Griffin, pick a card like that, not a card like this. Okay, like I said, most of you, you know, about like half of your, half of your deck is lands. The other half, like 40% of the, your deck is lands. 40% of your deck's creatures. You've got like 10% of cards, basically. What are you doing with those 10% of cards, guys? You're not running, you shouldn't run cards like this that are gonna bog down your deck. Run removal. Like, run removal is basically, run combat tricks, run things like that, things that lightning bolt your opponent, stuff like that. Like, you don't wanna waste your very few card slots on bad cards like this. I would really stay most of the time to avoid enchantments and avoid artifacts. I've said this so many times in like every limited thing ever. Enchantments and artifacts have to be really good to impress me. You will almost never see me running those in my draft decks because I hate them. It's usually instants, it's usually sorceries. Mana fixing, it's a big thing too. Don't run cards like this, please, 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 please. Okay, the last point I want to uh, mention um, is, and I, I've heard, I've heard players say this a lot, actually, is take a card like Markov Crusader. Some, some people will look at this card and say, this card is, is really sp kind of specific, right? It's a five mana, four, three lifelinker. It has haste as long as you control another vampire. They're going to say, what if I just have this card and I don't have another vampire? Guys, I don't care that this card is specific. This card is really good. It's really solid uncommon. It's a 5 mana 4-3 lifelinker. That's incredible. And if it sticks around the combat phase, who even freaking cares about that haste? If you got a haste with it, sweet. You swing for an extra 4 points of damage and you gain some life in the process. Even if not, you're left with a 5 mana 4-3 lifelinker. That's the bomb.com. Cards like this are like, I love cards like this. Yes, it may seem specific. Kind of. You may be like, oh, I really, what, I really need that you don't need this energy. Even if you don't have another vampire, even if you have one other vampire in your deck, I don't care. Run cards like this. G cards, great body. So, um, yeah, that is it, guys. That is it. We're talking about 
mistakes that people make when drafting and clearing some of those up and kind of giving alternatives that's what I kind of tried to do is like give alternatives rather than just like ranting about things people do um I hope you guys thought think this video was helpful and I'll see you guys next week in another video